what's up, everybody? Welcome to System Crafters Live. I'm David Wilson. We're back again with another live stream where we get together as a community and talk about whatever topic I've come up with at the very last minute for the day. And uh, this week is no exception. Uh, let me start by saying hello to the folks who are here so far. Uh, Pinko Kami, uh, someone with a square for a name. I'm guessing that's a Unicode character of some sort. Glenn, uh, programmer be programmed. Alex Cook. Uh, Wasim, Sim, Gun, Menacing Mecca, Samuel Jackson, uh, Bazinski, sorry, uh, Alejandro, thank you all for being here. Mark Owen, appreciate you all. Uh, let me know if you can hear me okay. For some reason, I can't hear myself in my headphones, and it's making things uh, very interesting at the moment. Hello to, uh, to Eric, to Judy, uh, Kak, uh, Andre, uh, Utkarsh, Jeff, Viz, nice to see you all. Excellent. Thanks, Jeff, for letting me know. Almoveja, thank you for letting me know. All right. Yeah, I think the uh, battery is going dead in these headphones. And I don't use Bluetooth in these headphones, but for some reason, if the battery goes completely dead, then the wire no longer transmits audio. So now I feel like I've got cotton balls on my ears and I can't actually hear my... Uh, <laughs> I can't actually hear my voice. That's fine, whatever. I don't need to hear it. Uh, Gun says, he accidentally donned the noise-canceling headphones. Well, I always wear these. I just don't turn them on. Yes, they are QC35. Alejandro says, I can't record if I hear myself in the headphones. I can, I can, if I hear myself, yeah. I, I kind of have to just to know that nothing's going wrong with the microphone. Because it's happened before. Uh, hello to, uh, let's see, King Shi. And to Ashras. Yes, all right. Okay, so uh, apologies that I was had to cancel the stream last week. Um, at the very last minute... In the in last Friday, uh, my older kid got sick at school. Apparently, there was some stomach virus that happened. I don't know how it happened, but it only lasted for a day. It wasn't that bad, but we just had to, uh, you know, take every precaution to make sure that the baby didn't get it because the baby's only two months old. So, you know, stomach virus is not a good thing for a baby to have. So I had to be uh, all hands on deck to uh, to help with that situation. But uh, now we're back to get today, so uh, we can have a good time. Uh, let's see. Ashra says, you have chat as a live QC for audio. Yes, that's right. That's good. I, I appreciate the help from the, the folks in the chat every time because it is helpful. Uh, Gun says, I thought you were listening to the background music while talking. I actually am listening to the background music while talking. So I hear the same songs 15 times every stream, which is a lot of fun, actually. Not really. But I just kind of tune it out now. I really don't even pay attention anymore. Um, all right, let me just jump right into the update slide. Uh, first thing I want to call out today, if you didn't see the uh, news post on the System Crafters website, uh, is that uh, Judy, or uh, otherwise known as Judy Dev, has joined Crafted Emacs as a co-maintainer, which I think is very exciting. Uh, Jeff Bowman wrote up a blog post about this uh, on his website. Ooh, a little fire. No, not that one. Firefox, thank you. Okay. Go away. Anyway. Um, on Jeff's website, you can check out the details on uh, Judy joining the, uh, the team. But uh, Judy had basically been uh, contributing to the project, uh, responding to the issues and sending pull requests for a few weeks. And Jeff decided to bring her on board, which I think is awesome. Um, and I, I'm glad to see that the team is growing. I also see in my uh, my live feed here that I have a little bit of a line back here. Another little snafu with the um, backdrop, the green screen. Uh, Gun says, it's hella fun uh, configuring Crafted Emacs. I'm glad to hear that. That's great. Amalveja says, are you still doing the newsletters? Yes, I would love to be doing the newsletters, but... Um, because I've got baby duty so much these days that I haven't really gotten back to it. This week I've had very, very little time to uh, to sit down at the computer other than just doing like my day job work, which is unfortunate because I got a lot of things I'd, I'd like to be doing. Anyway, back to the details. Um, so you'll probably see uh, Judy sending more uh, PRs and you know responding to issues on the, on the repo, which is great because there'll be some more activity there because uh, I haven't been very helpful. <laughs> Uh, in the past few months, so I'm glad to see that someone new is on board to help with, with stuff. And uh, Judy's been a member of the community for a while now. I think Judy's been coming to streams for at least a year, right? I think I first saw Judy's name last year. 
on Twitch somewhere. So uh, yeah, it, it may be longer than that. I could be wrong. Judy will have to correct me, but uh, glad to see a member of the community uh, getting more involved. Uh, next, uh, I wanted to point out that Denote 2.0 has been released. Um, for those of you who are uh, not aware of it, Denote is a note-taking package by uh, Protestilao Stavru, who's very well known in the Emacs community, has a great uh, YouTube channel about Emacs and other things. Um, I think it was last week that he released this. I was going to mention it last week, but didn't get a chance. Um, but basically, it's the version 2.0. There's a lot of new functionality. I haven't actually gone through to check it all out yet, but I do want to because I use Denote pretty much every day. So I want to see what else is new that I might be able to take advantage of. Um, I'm overdue for making an actual video or potentially a video series about the note. So this is a good uh, incentive for me to uh, to try that out and maybe explain some possible uh, workflows that you could uh, put together for that. So that's pretty cool. Uh, a lot of stuff in here. I'm not going to go through the whole thing. I'm just going to scroll through it a little bit. But uh, I think there's a lot more customiz customizability now in Denote for a lot of the things that you probably do on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, so I think that might make it pretty useful for crafting your own note-taking system, journaling, whatever you do with the note. I basically do both of those things. Uh, Ashra says, who finished the frigging hut, by the way? Yeah, I watched that video today, actually. Uh, if you didn't know about it, uh, uh, Protestilas has been building a hut because his landlord is raising his rent so high that he can't afford it anymore. So he, what he decided to do is just find an unused plot of land in Cyprus and just start building a hut kind of like not really with permission, which I think is cool because, you know, just, just, you know, move in and, and, and see what happens. I, I hope that he gets to stay there and you know, have like eminent domain or whatever. I don't know if Greece or Cyprus have the idea of eminent domain. Like if you've been there long enough, then it's yours, but uh, we'll see what happens. I, I think it's pretty cool that he did that. It's a lot farther along now than I thought it would be, but he only showed the outside. We haven't seen the inside yet. So probably it's just like a big room at this point. Um, but we'll see. I'm, I'm curious to see the more updates on that. I should probably ask him about it, but uh, I haven't had a chance. Alex Cook says, home crafter. Yes, uh, Protestill House is now the second home crafter that I know. The first one is uh, Benoit. I don't think Benoit's here today. I saw him in the Ma Matrix chat though. If you want to see some good home crafting, just go to the Matrix chat or the IRC and, and ask uh, Benoit J about his home crafting because he does a lot of stuff on his house. Uh, the third part of Cyprus, Protland, yes. It will be a new uh, uh, unincorporated territory. What do you call that, an annexed territory? Or is it the opposite of annexed? I don't know, man. I don't know my terminology. I, I just play with computers all day. Don't ask me about politics or geography or anything. Uh, also, submit your e uh, Emacs Conf 2023 uh, proposals. So I've been mentioning this every stream that we've had. Uh, definitely give that a thought. If you have any interest in talking about something that you're passionate about regarding Emacs, uh, Emacs Conf 2023 is happening uh, in December. And the uh, submission deadline is September 14th, which is still you know about a month and a half away. So you've got plenty of time to think of about a uh, talk proposal and I think it's only something like t five to ten minute or 20 minute talk so you, you don't have to worry about having like a 45 minute talk that you have to, to figure out how to fill up the time uh, which can be quite daunting if you don't do that pretty frequently for me it's not so bad because I just ramble for two hours every week so you know it's pretty easy but uh, but yes the point being you should give a talk at Emacs Conf 2023 I want to see a lot of people submitting proposals because there's a lot of people in the community doing cool stuff and I think, uh, I think you all should give it a try. Uh, the talks are generally pre-recorded. I think it's still the case for 2023. So um, that's one thing that means you don't have to be under pressure. So you can record your talk in advance. I use software like OBS, like I use for uh, my videos and streams. Very easy to, to set something up for that. So give it a shot, give it a shot. I, I highly recommend it. And it will also give you a chance to talk to Sacha Chua, which is cool. She commented on the last stream, I think, uh, about Emacs Conf. So, uh, one last thing, I mentioned this a couple weeks ago. I'll mention it uh, now again because the dates have changed. But um, I'll be out for two weeks. Uh, no streams in that time. Uh, let's see, calendar. 
which which uh, weeks would that be? That would be the fourth. Well, hmm. Yeah, the fourth and the eleventh of August. So those those are the streams that we won't be having. Um, I would do them, but the place where I'm going has very slow internet, so it's not really conceivable to stream there. I've tried it before; it didn't work out very well. Not worth it. Uh, Gun says maybe Prot found sort of a monastery for the brothers of the Church, church of Emacs. Well, it, it would be more likely that he would fi found a, a monastery for his philosophy, uh, which could be pretty interesting because you know I think the world needs more um, uh, spiritual compounds of uh, questionable mm, nature. <laughs> I don't know. Not to say that he would have a, a, a philosophical compound of a, of a questionable nature, but, uh, you know, I'm just making jokes here to make myself laugh. Prot is a very uh, moral and upstanding person, so we don't have to worry about that from him. Uh, Alex says, do you use any software to simulate Emacs keys and other applications since you're not using EXWM anymore? I saw your previous question, Alex, about that as well. Um, yeah, I have not been using EXWM as my main window manager or desktop environment for probably over a year now because I had stopped using EXWM and started using Erbstluft, if I still pronounce that correctly. Uh, I'm sure that Gun will tell me. Um, I used that for a while. And then I briefly tried StumpWM for like the fourth or fifth time and it didn't stick. And then I think it went back to EXWM for a little while and then decided eh, it's still just not doing it for me. So I went to Sway and I kind of got um, enamored with Wayland. So now I'm, I'm in Wayland land and I don't intend to leave, uh, which means I won't be using EXWM. So uh, the question is, do I use any software to simulate, simulate Emacs keys and other applications? Uh, no, I don't. But I think that you can use uh, programs like uh, Kmonad. I don't know if Kmonad works in Wayland, but it definitely works. Erbstluft. Erbstluft. Okay, maybe that's right. I don't know. I'm terrible at pronunciation. Uh, Kmonad is a, they call it an advanced keyboard manager, and it is quite advanced in the sense that it might be a little daunting to configure it first. But, you know, if you have used one of those cool, um, fancy multi-layer keyboard things that uses QMK, um, Kmonad is basically like a software version of that. And I think you could basically set up something like Emacs keys for other applications and even ones that would work all across different apps. Uh, but I have not used it. In fact, I never really used Emacs keys in EXWM. It wasn't something that I really bothered with. So, uh, yeah, I don't have a good answer. But if anybody like has an idea in the chat for something that would give you that type of functionality, then it would be great, I think, for, uh, for Alex to hear about. Ashra says, I can already, already imagine the video. Welcome to Protosilaus land, also known as Prot land. Today, I want to talk to you about private and personal property and the responsible usage of land. Yeah, that does sound like what you do. Yes, it does take a bit to set up for sure. Uh, EXWM, I mean, I think everyone should try EXWM at some point because if it works well enough for you and it doesn't um, have bugs that interrupt your workflows, then it's pretty cool. I enjoyed using it for many years, but uh, in the current situation where the maintainership of the project is slightly questionable because, you know, there's someone maintaining it, but it, things don't really move very frequently in that project. Uh, not, not to besmirch the name of anybody involved there. I'm just saying that the fact of the matter is I don't see a whole lot of activity, which maybe there's, there's not a need for it, but I ran into issues that um, feel like there needs to be some deep work done to address some of the problems and it just wasn't it wasn't working out enough for me to continue using it so but uh i i do still admire the project because it's, it's pretty cool all right let's get to the real stuff here uh gun says there's a site describing i3wm and emacs integration sure that youtube was censored the url i'm pretty sure that uh square root minus one or uh a, a pavel uh wrote that I don't think Pavel's here though. If Ashraz knows the link to Pavel's post about Emacs plus uh, i3wm, then he can link it in. Uh, Bionic Battlefish says, EXWM seems broken in Emacs 29. I've also heard that, and I use Emacs 29. Actually, what do I use? Emacs version. 
29. Okay. You can look it up. Thanks. I don't, I can't paste it to the other machine because I, I have two machines here. So the chat's on the other side. All right. So today, what I want to do is take a look at some, um, two fairly well-known and one not so fairly well-known uh, packages for Emacs that give you a terminal or shell style uh, environment inside of Emacs. And if you've been an Emacs fan for a while and you haven't really been trying to use it as your terminal of choice, then you kind of been missing out because there's a lot of value, in my opinion, to doing all your terminal or shell work inside of Emacs. Uh, primarily the fact that you can easily, you know, set key bindings to whatever you want, or you can automate things, or you can easily copy text out of the terminal. A lot of times, you know, copying text out of a terminal is not, depending on which terminal program you use, uh, it's not very easy to copy things between programs, but if you have a terminal in Emacs, then it's much easier to sort of know how to copy and paste things, move things between windows, et cetera. Uh, yeah, I think that's the one. Thanks, Ashraz. So um, I think there's a lot of value to it, but the, the sort of downside of trying to use Emacs as a terminal or have a shell in Emacs is that um, the built-in methods for doing this either don't emulate an actual terminal very well or they're kind of slow uh, or they have their other own quirks that don't make it very smooth so uh, what i wanted to do today is to take a look at three different options that you should consider if you want to try to do this uh, two of them are external packages one of them is built in to get a terminal or a terminal like experience in emacs we'll be looking at eshell vterm and a relatively newer package called eat which i think stands for emacs as terminal and uh, we're going to experiment with all three of these options to see which one gives us the best results in terms of the following factors. A speed, uh, terminal emulation quality, which is important if you actually need to use real terminal applications in your day-to-day -day hacking or work, and also efficiency or ease of use. And I distinguish that from speed by um, the efficiency of how you can navigate around in that terminal, like if key bindings work the way that you expect them to, or maybe if you can uh, configure it in a way that is amenable to your workflow, etc. So speed is more about just like raw speed of rendering output from terminal programs and efficiency is more about you and how you use it. Uh, yes. Okay. So, uh, uh Akib is here. I'm, I'm not sure if I pronounced your, your name correctly, but Akib is the, uh, um, the author of Eat. So thanks for joining us. I appreciate you being here. I'm sorry I didn't actually uh, mention it to you whenever I posted it, but I have been basically in a mad dash today to get anything done because I have no time. So sorry about that. But thanks for being here. I appreciate it. So um, what we're going to do is try to quickly come up with a decent configuration for each of these and then experiment to see what kind of results we can get. Um, and I'm going to try to do this in a clean Emacs environment and not my current one so that we just sort of see what the raw configuration would be and what things would work like if my own configuration wasn't getting in the way. Because I've had issues both with vterm and with eat uh, recently, and I think it probably has to do with my own config getting in the way. So we'll see. Gun says, key bindings. It's fun to use evil in Emacs and uh, vim key bindings in zshell than when working with vterm. Um, yeah, so that is sort of a, a point of contention sometimes. Uh, I've had a lot of trouble with vterm, with switching back and forth between normal mode in evil mode, or no, normal state in evil mode, and then back to um, uh, be able to, to type in text, basically. So we'll just uh, have a little bit of fun playing around with these things and, and see where we get. Hello to Minas Mazar. Okay. So let's start with eShell, since that's the one that's built in. Um, I've covered eShell before in the original Emacs from Scratch series. I kind of want to do some more videos on it at some point. But I just haven't gotten back around to it yet. Um, eShell has a reputation for being a little bit tricky to configure because the way that the uh, package works, the, the order that certain packages or certain features, I don't know what you would call it really, uh, of eShell are loaded. You don't really know like the right place to hook in different settings of different configuration bits for eShell because there's a few different things you need to configure. Uh, so it is a little bit tricky sometimes to to get that right. What I've heard is that some work has been done in newer Emacs versions, potentially even 29, to simplify some things in eShell. E I'm not sure if that's actually the case, but since I'm using Emacs 29 today, uh, maybe we'll run into some of that. But um, let's uh, let's get started by looking at the eShell manual. 
I just go here and grab that. I'm, I guess I could pull up in the info system, but we'll be in the browser anyway. So uh, Shubash is late for class. Uh, that will be uh, 50 laps around the parking lot for you. All right, so let's jump over to the browser. And then, are you gonna load? Okay. So um, so let's, let's talk about what eShell is. We're not gonna go look at the manual uh, too much. eShell is not a terminal emulator. Let's distinguish uh, between a shell and a terminal emulator. So uh, a terminal emulator is a program that knows how to interpret the um, control codes that come from a TTY. I could be getting some of this terminology wrong, but basically it is something that takes inf input from the user and can uh, pass the input along to any program that's currently running uh, in the context of the terminal. And then any output that's written by the program that's being run in the terminal gets written back out. And that output may actually have control characters, which do things like change colors of text on the screen, put text in certain positions, completely wipe the screen. It could do a lot of things. Uh, so <laughs> blasphemy. Yeah, I, I know that. I know that. Let's, let's, let's get to the point of doing that in a, in a bit, Ashraz. Um, so eShell is not a package that emulates a terminal. What it does is it, it gives you an actual shell environment inside of Emacs. Now a shell is different than a terminal because a shell is actually a program that gives you a command environment for typing commands like bash. Bash is a shell. A uh, bash is not a terminal because you need a terminal program or a TTY. Like if you use control alt F, whatever in your Linux distribution, you get, you jump to like a, a text screen basically that has a shell there. So a shell is a program that can be run in a terminal. eShell is a shell. It's a shell that is written in Emacs Lisp. So uh, you're not using bash when you use eShell. You're using eShell, eShell commands. Uh, the interesting thing about eShell is that if you uh, load it up, well, let's load it up here just to start with. Um, you can actually type in normal Emacs commands as commands. Like let's say find file, wrong number of arguments, find file, uh, let's see, dot files. So I actually just opened up my dot files folder with find file by typing find file. And that's the normal find file command in Emacs. So not only can you call normal commands in your, uh, your program environment, what would you call it? I mean, it's, it's your user environment. Like if you, if I were to call geeks here, I can run geeks, right? Geeks help. So any program that you could run in bash, you can also run in geeks, sorry, in uh, eShell. But the interesting thing about eShell is that some of the commands that you're used to, like ls, they're not actually uh, real commands that are coming with your distribution or, um, or commands that are installed in your system. They're actually written in Emacs Lisp. So the ls that's here is a, uh, it's written completely in Emacs Lisp, which can cause some some severe slowness whenever you're trying to do things like, let's say if I do ls of uh, GNU slash store, it will hang Emacs for a while until it actually lists all the stuff in those folders and uh, prints it out on the screen. So you, I actually pressed enter already and it's just sitting there waiting, waiting, waiting. It's not doing anything yet because it's going to just blurt out this huge output whenever it finally figures it out. So the thing to know about Emacs lit, or the eShell is that because a lot of core commands like ls, cp, mv, you know, copy, move, etc., are written in Emacs Lisp, um, they will be executing in the same thread as your uh, normal Emacs process. So if you try to copy or move a well, copy a large file in eShell, it will actually hang your Emacs until the copy is complete, which is a little bit unfortunate. Now. Um, you can get around that and I'm just kind of waiting for this thing to finally finish and it's really not getting there, is it? I, I think I can hear the fan running. Yeah, there we go. Finally. So it took, how long was that? Like 40 seconds, a minute? I don't know. Like to list that folder, which, you know, quite a large folder. It took a while. If I were to go into V term, my own V term and do the same thing, LS GNU slash store it's gonna start writing stuff out immediately and it will get done pretty fast because it doesn't have to go through that whole, you know, eShell process. You're not selling eShell or Emacs at this point, says Theo Peckley. I'm just, I'm telling you 
the the real truth about uh, e shell. I'm not saying it's bad. I'm just saying that there are some differences to e shell than there there are to other things like uh, you know Bash or other other shells and terminal programs. We're just trying to make a distinction here. Um, I'm giving the option of e shell because I think there's interesting aspects to e shell, which are like what I mentioned before, the ability to call um, uh, Emacs list functions in the shell. So if you want to write your own custom commands in e shell, you just write an Emacs list function and you can call it directly. So instead of writing like a bash script to do something, you could have an Emacs list function in your configuration in your in it, in it, that el file that you can just run in the shell, which I think is pretty cool. I did use it slightly, um, but probably not as much as I should have as a e shell user. I pretty much just use e shell to run normal terminal commands. So um, a lot of the time it wasn't, you know, hugely valuable. The other useful thing about eShell is that the, uh, the input is a lot easier to manage. So let's say I wanted to, uh, you know, put in a command. I just use control R in my configuration to pull up the history. I can do normal text editing on this command line, right? Like I can just, you know, use uh, evil mode and, and delete things and undo it however I want. If you go into something like vterm, you can't do that because you, you're beholden to the line editing of the underlying shell that's being run, like bash. You can't take just you know turn on evil mode and start deleting things and, and inserting text the way that you normally would. Uh, you, you're going to end up with trouble. Uh, things will get out of sync, and then you're going to have a bad time. You don't have that problem with the eShell because eShell, this is a normal Emacs buffer. This is not some weird you know buffer that has a terminal program giving you the prompt this is just an emacs prompt so that is a bigger benefit here is that you'll get a sort of more streamlined uh editing experience for the prompt in the terminal so that that is a benefit uh judy says you can do a little bit of editing in vterm but it's not as stable yeah it 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 can happen but uh a, a lot of times it won't work the way you expect it to uh, Todd Fisher says eShell redirect to buffer is a killer feature. That is pretty cool, actually. You don't have to use things like uh, Emacs client to uh, put output of commands into a buffer. You can just do it directly. I don't have an example of that on hand because I didn't use it very much, but uh, uh, it is possible and it is a nice use case of eShell. So let's let's jump to my show notes for a second. So I can write down some of this rambling so we have it later. So... Um, I would say like pros, come on now. I gotta fix that autosave logic. Um, nice prompt editing experience. Uh, you can run Emacs commands uh, from the shell prompt. Uh, easy redirect of command output to uh, Emacs buffers. Uh, there was another thing. But uh, let's go with cons though. Um, output can be really slow for some things like uh, LS on large folders. Let me tell you one thing though. I showed you the example of do using LS on that folder. You can actually use LS star, I think, uh, GNU slash store, or is it star LS? Is it star LS? There, there we go, star LS. Uh, that's actually quite fast, right? And it's because that star at the beginning of a command name says, okay, don't use the Emacs list version of whatever this is. Try to run a terminal command instead. So it, it defers to the LS that comes with core utils instead of trying to run its own thing. So if you ever have a lot of trouble with uh, Emacs not, or eShell being really slow for certain commands, you, you can do like star CP or star MV, star LS, et cetera, uh, so that you don't have to worry about those things. I think you can even look for eShell slash if you want to know what commands eshell implements uh you can look for eshell slash using describe function you see cd cp du ln ls mv a bunch of stuff that you recognize there's eshell versions of those commands um, so those are things you might want to avoid using if they're slow and also worth knowing um the parameters to these commands might be slightly different than what you're used to from the actual gnu core utils versions or if you use some different uh, versions of these commands, like maybe from BusyBox or something. Uh, these commands may have different parameters. So be aware that if you're in eShell and you're typing commands that you're used to from 
normal terminal environments, they may be slightly different. The output may be slightly different, etc. Does eShell work with lolcat? I don't know. Probably not. Um, let's see. Though you still can drop through to the real commands uh, with star ls, etc. Uh, what was another con? Uh, it's not a terminal emulator. So programs, so terminal programs don't render correctly. So let's take a look at that real quick. HTOP. So that's actually not bad, but I think it's because it's deferring. I, I need to load up a different, uh, let's do this. Geeks shell uh pure let's see if pure works emacs next p gtk let's see oh okay i'm gonna be turn cool let's see how long this takes all right so i should be here now um which emacs ah okay that makes sense actually i probably need to pull core utils into this core utils let's see if emacs will launch uh, why is it doing this? I think we had this problem once before. Where's my mouse? Okay. What is the... There is a couple Wayland, Wayland display. Okay, so there's Wayland display, uh, env, grep, Wayland. And there's another thing, xdg current desktop. Yeah, I don't wanna do Emacs NW. Uh, yes, I, I, should, I should point out, I was sort of, Eating around the bush, but uh, as uh, Matabir says, E shell is not a fully POSIX compliant shell. So things you expect to work in things in things like Bash uh, don't actually uh, work the same way. Hey Alex, it's not POSIX at all. Yes, that's right. So let me see. Um, I need to remember the command for this. So geeks shell help. I need to pass those environment variables along. Expose no. It's uh There was something for environment variables. Where was it? Preserve. Yeah. Okay. So, if I run it again, sorry folks. I didn't have time to prepare this. So, so geek shell um what was it? E. I don't know if that's gonna work. Let's see. I oh, know package. Dashy. Hey. That seems better. Okay. So I think that uh, now I need to use a different init directory. So make dear uh, shell test, cd shell, shell test. All right, so now um, emacs init directory, that's emacs 29 thing. So what we wanna do is uh, throw up an init.el here. Uh, first of all, let's get rid of this theme because we can't be looking at this the whole time. Load theme, uh, let's start with wombat. Or was it Tango Dark? I don't know. Okay, that's a little bit better. Not great. And then, um, let's start with E shell. So require E shell, probably don't even require it because I can just run E shell, right? Okay, so E shell's built in. You can just run E shell, meta X E shell. And then you will get a shell environment just like this uh, to start off with. So uh, quite, easy to get going with but like i said you know there's pros and cons to eshell itself what i wanted to show here which i can't do because i have uh my uh 
uh, my Geeks shell not set up right, HTOP. Let's add HTOP to our shell. Come on. Here we go. Now, um, here we go. Hey, why did it not load my init.yl file? Ah, because I'm not in that folder. Okay, I'm sorry, folks. One second. There we go. Okay, so now let's load up eShell. And I'm going to run HTOP. So that's what HTOP looks like. It can't be right, can it? I wonder if it's already... Let's see. There's there's a variable you can set that will automatically send uh, certain commands to another buffer. Man, I can't remember what it is. And there's so many here. No, Lambda is not a default prompt. Um, visual commands. E shell visual commands. Uh huh. So H top is already in this this list. So uh, because H top is already in this list, um, H top actually looks okay because it's putting it in a different buffer. And I think it's using uh, term mode to emulate that. But term mode is also not very good. It's why I don't really suggest it because it's. Term mode itself, I mean, it works, but it's slow and it doesn't perfectly emulate a terminal. ANSI term mode in Emacs is a bit better, but also is a little bit slow. VTerm has been better for a long time for this type of thing. What font am I using for the bar? I don't remember. Probably uh, Iosevka Ale. NeoFetch, maybe NeoFetch. Uh, I can just take HTOP out of this list and then we can really see what's going on here. So let me just check this out. Um, Remove, where is it? Is there a remove from list? Set Q, E shell, visual commands. Remove, uh, element sequence, H top from E shell, visual commands. I don't know if this actually does a mutation, but HTOP is not there anymore. So let's go back to eShell. We'll try this again, just to make my point. All right, HTOP. Yeah, so that's what it looks like. This is not a terminal emulator. If you run a terminal program, uh, you're gonna get some weird looking results in a lot of cases. And that's why this uh, eShell visual commands can be useful because certain commands can be deferred to another buffer, but that buffer may still not operate correctly like if you have a program that has a lot of prompts or something it, it may still not um, uh, do the right thing so like i said eShell is cool for having an emacs focused shell environment like if a lot of the things that you do you want to automate with the emacs lisp and have them be commands in your shell and also have better integration with emacs from your shell environment then eShell is pretty cool but it's definitely not a, a replacement for a full terminal. So in the years that I was using eShell, which I still do sort of, but not as much anymore. I was using eShell primarily, but then if there was any program I needed to run that was a legitimate terminal program that had prompts or that had like a full interface that you had to navigate, I would switch over to vTerm to do that. Uh, still in a lot of cases, well, actually I've started using vTerm more just because the things I need a terminal for are typically actual terminal applications. I don't use Git at the terminal anymore. Um, I use Geeks at the terminal, but um, usually you want it to be in vTerm so that things like Geek Shell work correctly. Because let's 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 check this out. I wonder if I can do this. Geeks Shell. Uh, what can we put in there? Hello. Ah, geeks not found, whatever, because I don't have it in my geek shell that's uh, that's passed through here. Ba basically, what I'm trying to say is when you run geek shell, it runs bash. Can I run bash? No, there's no bash here either. If you run another shell inside of eShell, like running bash inside of eShell, it's going to get messy really fast. So you don't want to do, do that either. So eShell is kind of like a, a nice playground for doing things with 
Emacs and Emacs list. But as soon as you need to start running real terminal programs, you're going to have to reach for something else. So part of the reason why we're talking about this is that we're going to look and see how well VTerm compares in terms of integrating with Emacs and also this uh, eat package that uh, is a much newer. Uh, Matabir says, I was a hardcore bash guy before I started using Emacs, so I don't use eShell as much as I use term mode or full emulation vterm. Yeah, term mode, I mean, let's just take a look re at that real quick. Uh, term mode. Uh, oh, I don't have bash installed, so it's freaking out a little bit. Maybe I should do that. Bash. What was the other thing I tried to run? Okay, so term mode. Term, term, that's the one, bash. All right, cool. So yeah, it, it's not printing out Unicode characters correctly here <laughs> or, or color codes, it seems, uh, but it's sort of working a little bit. Uh, LS uh, GNU slash store, it prints things fairly quickly, but not, not super, super quickly. Yeah, I was looking for term, but uh, I, I didn't have bash installed anyway in the shell, so I was gonna have problems. So uh, it does work. HTOP, you know, it works. You can navigate around, use arrow keys and stuff. So it's okay. Term is okay. Uh, ANSI term is a bit better, I think. Oh. Uh, ANSI dash term. Uh, HTOP. Yeah. It's hard to tell from this. It does seem a little bit more responsive. And uh, LS GNU store. I think they're going to be bound by the same... Uh, printing efficiency so i don't think this is going to be much faster or faster at all i think the difference between ansi term and term is ansi term has better uh, color code representation but as we see here it's it's not actually working the way we expect it to in with my shell uh prompt time to fix your term info uh probably probably uh echo term you know e term color hmm interesting uh export term equals what is it x term 256 I don't know let's uh it's yeah, still not doing what I expected to all right so, uh, actually I don't have term info packages installed in the shell maybe that's another reason why so using each shell can be problematic at times all right, so we're not really talking about term or ANSI term. There are options if you want to use them, but, you know. Ah, thank you, uh, Akib. Let's see, term dash uh, 256 color. Yes, probably not going to work here for me. Mm. Let's actually try, just out of this, the sake of curiosity, let's, let's do this. I think it's uh, term... Oops. Starting the Geeks Revel to look up a package. Term, no. What do these use? Nothing, okay. I don't know where the term info uh, files come from in Geeks. Anywho. Oh, okay. Yeah, fine. Cool. Now let's go back into Emacs again. All right. So uh, let's take a look at uh, VTerm. I, I mean, I, I guess we kind of answered the questions we wanted to answer about uh, eShell, right? Yeah, Keep. I think you were right. I think that's the, the correct uh, term info name. I just think that my stuff's not set up correctly in the shell. Though you can use eShell visual, uh, what was it? eShell visual programs, visual commands. Visual commands to defer specific programs to term mode. I gotta fix my font faces here. All right, vterm, let's just jump right into that. I think I actually need to uh, pull in the package for it too. So let's go back to this vterm <laughs> and hop out and then go to uh, Emacs vterm. I think we can also pull in eat here, but I think I'd rather pull in eat from um, package repos instead. Say what? Oh, okay. 
here we go. I'm pulling in vterm as an e, uh, geeks package because I want the pre-compiled C components, which we'll talk about in a second, to be there already. So vterm. Uh, as you can see, right at the gate, vterm actually does render everything correctly, especially my satanic prompt here, just for fun. Uh, let's see. And also, uh, speed of the output is much faster. You don't see it update as fast. It's not scrolling by as fast, but I think it's because it's, it's paging in all of the output of the program rather than it just writing line by line. I think what uh, is happening with all the built-in terminals in Emacs is they're just like, they're, they're just grabbing it line by line and writing it out, which makes it look like it's going fast, but it's actually not going so fast. Uh, I think this is buffering everything and just putting pages of uh, output on the screen. So that does seem to help. Um, and that command finished a lot more quickly. And also because you're in a legitimate terminal and uh, shell, anything like, you know, copying files, et cetera, that's not gonna lock up your Emacs because that's an external process is running all that stuff. Uh, which same thing is the case if you're using term or ANSI term in Emacs, because that is also using a normal shell, which means external uh, programs are handling all that stuff. So term and ANSI term will not lock up your Emacs the way that eShell would for running those kinds of commands. Term paste screenshots. Basically, I mean, it's kind of like that. Uh, things like HTOP, um, it looks basically the same as what we saw before um, with term. I don't know if there's anything better about the output here. I do see some of the text looks a bit more black. I don't know if that's you know intended or not, but um, but you know th things like that do work. The problem with vterm is like out of the box, it can be a little bit tricky sometimes because uh, especially if you use evil mode. Evil mode makes everything trickier in Emacs, but at least in this case, uh, vterm has certain things like if you try to use control. Yeah, Control-X, Control-F does work. Control-C, does Control-C work the right way? All right, so maybe it's evil mode that's causing me the most problems, but a lot of times I was having issues with key bindings not working the way you would expect. You would get stuck, basically, in uh, vterm. I think there's a command in vterm. Uh, what is it? Some kind of mode here. Solution: Don't use evil mode. Yeah, I, I'm I'm kind of uh, stuck with it. I can't I can't break myself. Yeah, there isn't a, a specific mode. So I think this is one distinction between vterm and eat is that vterm is pretty literal. Any any keys that you type in sort of go straight to the terminal, which is good if you want a like a better in terminal experience, but if you're trying to get out of the terminal to do other Emacs commands, sometimes there can be uh, problems with that. Is there some, uh, let's see. Uh, prefix, no. Have I tried God mode to replace evil? Yeah, I used God mode for a few weeks and uh, it was okay, it wasn't bad, but I don't like the default Emacs uh, key bindings. I think that they're not very ergonomic compared to HJKL. Uh, movement keys. Um, I'm looking for... There's, there's a lot of stuff in vterm. It's very, very configurable, for sure. What is this vterm use vterm prompt? I haven't seen that before. Oh, prompt detection method. That's right. Okay. Yeah. Um, if you look at the Emacs vterm, uh, the readme for lib vterm or Emacs vterm, there is some configuration required to give the best integration with Emacs because your shell needs to be writing out uh, special characters, control characters to let vterm know uh, where you are in the file system. Now, um, my shell is already set up correctly. The one you're seeing now of this, this prompt configuration is my own config. I probably should uh, run bash cache bash without the uh, login shell. Let's see. How do you skip that? No profile. How about that? I'm going to run bash uh, dash dash no dash profile. Ah, it didn't work. Host? I don't know what package that comes from. 
I don't know why I want host name, unless it's for this prompt. That's annoying. Anyway, point being, uh, one thing that you will find when using VTerm, if you haven't set it up correctly, is that when you start using CD to navigate around your file system hierarchy in VTerm, and then you try to use Control X, Control F to open a file from that same folder path that you're in, uh, it will not be in the same folder that your shell is in. Uh, and that can be pretty annoying at first. Um, and I kind of went along for a long time with VTerm with my configuration like that because I was just too lazy to fix it. Um, but it, it is annoying. And it's something you're going to want to fix really early early on. You're going to have to edit your bash configuration to pull in uh, some of this stuff. Now, what I did was... Why is it doing that? That's weird. Uh, dot .files... Uh files bash is it bash prompt that I pull it in Let's see I'm pulling in uh, something from vterm somewhere yeah so there, there's this little snippet you can pull from the vterm emacs vterm bash this little snippet here you can pull in to your bash configuration um, there's an environment variable that vterm will inject into your shell, which is the path to where vterm is installed. And along with vterm, there's this shell file, which will set up some things for your bash shell. Um, I don't know if it has one for Z shell also, if you use Z shell, but um, it is possible that uh, you can just pull in this stuff and you have access to some of these functions that are being called in this file. Like for instance, where it talks about uh, directory tracking, there's a function called, uh, is it this one? No, it's not that one. Shell shy configuration for directory tracking. V term set directory. I think that comes with um, that shell file that I, I pull in here. So I'm using V term. Oh, that's fun. V term command. No, it's not in here. Excuse me. Anyway, the point I'm making is that for good integration with Emacs, VTerm does require a little extra configuration for this to work. Uh, I'm not sure if it's the same case with uh, with Eat, but we'll see in just a little while when we take a look at that package. Eshell does not have that problem because Eshell is all written in uh, Emacs Lisp. Um, I wonder if uh, Term has that problem. <clears throat> I keep making really stupid mistakes because I don't have evil mode bindings. I'm just totally uh, wrecking my kill anyway. Yes, I'm wrecking my configuration file. All right, let's run uh, term. Now I want to see we're in uh, home debut wheel. If I were to cd2 shell test and then hold on a second. And then uh, you use control X control F then where where are I? Where are we? And uh, term does seem to be giving me some trouble here. Um, how can I use Control X? Is it Control C? Control X? No. It's not term send raw. Ah, is it term care mode? No, it's not right. Okay, control C, control J, sorry. Control X, control F. Okay, so it does seem to be tracking my prompt somehow. I don't know exactly how it's doing that. Um, CD, wow. Uh, projects, wow. Yeah, I'm using tab and it's, it's not really coping with it well. So term is not good. Um, let's try uh, ANSI term just for giggles. We're checking out uh, prompt tracking. So projects, code, crafted, uh, Emacs. Control X, Control F. Yeah, so it does track the directory somehow. I don't know exactly how it's doing it, if it just like recognizes it somehow. Uh, Dear Ed. Wow. Meta X is not working at the moment. So Control C, Control J to go back to line mode and then Dear Ed. Okay, so it does follow the directory. So vterm does not do that by default, which is interesting. We will take a look at eat in a minute, Alejandro. So um, yes, like I was saying, vterm 
wins when it comes to speed, I think, at least so far. Uh, pros. Of speed and uh, terminal um, emulation completeness. And that's because there's actually a native code component to VTerm. Whenever you install VTerm, you actually have to have a C compiler on your machine so that VTerm can compile a program that acts as the actual terminal emulator. And then that relays all of the information over to your Emacs buffer through some kind of communication channel. Um, so it does raise the complexity a little bit of using VTerm if you're not on a system like Geeks where you have these things already pre-compiled. But yeah, you need, oh yeah, you need a C compiler, you need CMake, you also need libvterm. So yeah, it's it's not necessarily straightforward. So um, let's, let's say uh, cons, uh, you need some compiler dependencies to use it on most systems. I also think uh, it doesn't support Windows, which maybe it doesn't matter to some of you, but I know that there are some of you who do use Windows. Um, now, I will say a, a pro of eShell is that uh, supports Windows and uh, emulates Linux style shell commands uh, in that environment. Which is pretty cool. You can use, you know, CD, LS, the, the, the Linux way or the, you know, GNU core utils way, more or less. Uh, the compiler thing is definitely a con. Yeah, I think the, the stream may be a little bit lagging behind. Uh, let's see. Um, oh, and also uh, requires some extra, come on now, uh, bash or other shell configuration to uh, make it blend with Emacs uh, more effectively. Directory tracking, key bindings, etc. Um, tricky to use with evil mode. That's a con of VTerm. That's for sure. I I've had a lot of trouble over the over the years using uh, VTerm with evil mode. I've kind of gotten used to it, so you know I I know what the quirks are at least in my workflow and in the way that I use it, so I can get around those problems. But it, there there are some problems. So, um, you know, there, there's obviously stuff in Evil Collection for VTerm, which requires its own extra setup. It's not a whole lot, but it is something that you probably want to do to have a good experience with VTerm uh, using Evil Mode. Uh, what else can we say are pros? Um, you can use Emacs inside of Emacs. Let's take a look at that. Uh, not in ANSI term. I don't think that's going to work. In VTerm, Emacs dash nw cannot load file no such file directory s okay whatever oh i think this <clears throat> excuse me because i uh which yeah in v term i need v, v term send control where is it send next key Control X, Control C. Ah, it didn't work. It's interesting that this is actually, um, has different behavior than what I see in my own VTerm. Usually the uh, keys go directly in there all the time. VTerm, let's see if there's any configuration that might control this. I don't know if mode map has something to do with it. Yeah, there's a lot of self insert stuff here. Uh, Control left, right. We're not seeing control X. Fine. V term. Term environment variable. Ah, so that sets that. That's cool. Uh, Alejandro says, I had a lot of trouble copying and pasting text between V term buffer and other buffers. Yeah. Um, Evil mode actually makes that easier for VTerm, but I think for, for non-evil, it is more complicated because you can't navigate above uh, where the prompt is unless you kind of like use your mouse. Yeah, because even control N, control P get sent along to the shell. Now there's this VTerm uh, copy 
I saw it somewhere. Copy mode. It's control C, control T. I don't know what that does. Oh, it lets you move the cursor around. So no longer is, uh, is your stuff being sent to the, uh, the, to the cursor. So uh, you could do things like, you know, shift select things and then, uh, was it alt W to copy? Yeah. And then uh, what was the, the command we just ran? Control C, what? Control C, control T. Yeah, and that, that turns copy mode back off. So that's kind of nice if you don't use evil mode. You have a specific mode you can drop into to move the cursor around to copy stuff. Uh, which is, you know, different than a lot of terminals. So you can say, you can say that's a, a pro of VTerm if you're not using evil key bindings. Uh, you can use C dash insert and that should uh, always copy without any config. Okay. Uh, what else? Yeah, I want to do the Emacs and Emacs bit, but. Ah, uh, yeah. Once again, I screwed that up. Vterm send. There's like functions for that. Vterm send control X. Yeah, and then control C. There we go. Now I got out. I don't know the right way to flip to a different mode where those things aren't bound, but I think that um, if you read the eat documentation, it alludes to that. Like you don't, there's no way to flip to a mode where you can actually use, you can directly pass in uh, any key bindings. Is it control Q? Let me try that again and init directory uh, dot. So control Q, control X, control C. No, it's not working because it's, it's going to my main Emacs uh, thing. Hey, Mjolnir. Uh, control H, K, Control Q. Oh, Vterm self insert. Well, it didn't work, did it? Control Q, Control X, Control Q, Control C. Weird. Yeah, weird. I don't know. And this is a clean Emacs environment, so I don't know why it wouldn't be working the way it's supposed to. Yeah, I've, I've looked at term and ANSI term uh, briefly. All right, so we'll go back to. Uh, Sin control X, sin control C. Oops, that's the wrong one. Can I sin control a G? Boom. Anyway, you can run Emacs in Emacs, uh, but you have to make sure your key bindings and Vterm are set up right so that uh, things pass through the way that you expect them to. Um, all right, so let's see. Cons, let's see. Did I say anything about key bindings? Yeah, I did sort of say that. Uh, not easy to have uh, separate modes for uh, passing through certain keys directly to the terminal app. Let's see. Copy mode. Just, just making sure that I'm not missing anything here. Okay. Nothing special. Uh, another really interesting thing about this, I don't know if Eat does this also, but there's a special, <clears throat> excuse me, thing you can uh, use in Vterm in a shell, like in Bash, you can uh, use this Vterm command function that comes with that Bash script that you load in. And, uh, you can actually call Emacs commands from within bash scripts using vterm commands. So this is uh, using find file below for the path of whatever the parameter is that uh, uh, you, you passed in at the bash shell and it will launch that file or open that file into uh, a window below the current window. So it's got an example of open file below documents. So there is some level of integration um, through the vterm interface. And uh, uh, you can use vterm uh, command inside of, of your shell to invoke Emacs command. So it's kind of like what you can do with eShell 
but it's not quite as clean because you're not in an Emacs Lisp environment already. Um, so your mileage may vary. Alejandro says, have we not established that evil mode is evil? Well, that's, you know, part of the reason why I like evil mode is because it's called evil mode. You know, everybody's got a little bit of an evil streak, right? I don't know, not me. I I'm perfectly saintly. Just kidding. Um, all right, so let's take a look at eat then. Emacs eat. So this is, uh, like we mentioned before, this is called emulate a terminal. And uh, this is a, a newer, relatively newer package that kind of competes with uh, VTerm in terms of being a, a faithful terminal emulator package for Emacs that is you know, pretty fast. And one benefit is it does not require native code components, so you don't have to have a compiler installed in your machine uh, to use it correctly. So uh, we can install this directly from the non-GNU ELPA, which means that I should be able to, uh, inside of my Emacs config, go into my init file, which isn't currently open. What did I do? It's acting as if I'm using uh, tramp for some reason. Okay. Um, unless package installed p because I'm not I don't have use package installed. Oh wait, use package is here by default, right? Yes, excellent. What's the package called? Eat, just plain old eat. Available on non GNU Elpa. All right, cool. So uh, if I have that uh, ensure T, then I should be able to install it. Cool. So that is uh, being compiled right now. Probably bytecode compilation. Great. Alejandro says Emacs 29, baby. Yeah, I mean, having use package built in is pretty nice. Uh, I stopped using use package for a while, but now I've moved back to it and Honestly, I'm much happier because it does pretty much everything I need it to do, and it's concise, so it's quite nice. All right, so now we've got a bunch of uh, custom variables displayed all throughout the init file, which is fantastic, but we don't, we don't worry too much about that. All right, so we got eat installed. Uh, let's see what we should do first. Uh, we can read this comparison in a little while. Oh, usage. Just run uh, meta x eat. So eat. So we're automatically dropped into a shell. Uh, the, sh the prompt is being rendered correctly. Seems fine. Let's see what the, uh, the speed of LS would be. So GNU store. I mean, we're still like, you know, maybe writing it line by line, but it's just doing fine. I don't feel like it's that slow. Uh, I, I also don't see my CPU spiking very much here. So that's nice. I wonder if there's a way to uh, buffer the output of eat so that uh, things can be faster. I mean, nobody really needs to do an LS on a folder that big because it's just pointless. You should be using LS and then piping it through grep or something, but uh, I digress. So far, looks pretty good, right? Uh, let's navigate around. I don't know if it does shell tracking by default, but let's, let's just see what happens. So cd dot dot slash projects code crafted dash emacs. Um, this is one thing that I've seen from time to time. It may just be because of my prompt configuration not being set up in a way that Eat can track correctly, but sometimes when I press tab, my cursor will jump some lines above for some reason. I don't know what's going on with that. Probably something I'm doing wrong. Okay, so we're now in the Crafty Emacs folder. If I use Control X, Control F, it's still in shell test. So Eat may also need some kind of uh, tracking. Yeah, so there's an integration folder here that looks like uh, similar to what we saw with VTerm. Let's see, let me go to our stuff here. Uh, pros does not require uh, compiled components. Um, does seem to emulate uh, the terminal pretty well. Let's check a look at uh, HTOP. Where is my prompt? There we go. I have to go click here now, I think. Yeah. H, hey, now. Wow. Okay, so 
It's, it's getting a little off track. I might need to install that uh, that script. Let's see, is there any easy way to do this? Eat prompt command. Test, uh, okay. Wait. So it automatically sets up the prompt for you, it seems, which is kind of nice if that's all it takes. Let's see, bash. Set up shell integration for GNU bash, put the following at the end of your bash RC. Uh, eat shell integration dear uh, echo. Yeah, this is not working right now. Echo. Eat. Cool. All right. So that shows us that it, it is there correctly. For me to update my bash config, I think I would have to uh, run Geeks Home, which I don't really feel like doing right now. Maybe I can source it myself. Let's do this. Uh, source. Eat. Shell integration dear. Uh, slash bash, because I'm using bash. Okay. Now, if I were to CD to projects, code, crafted, Emacs, already the prompt is, is oh, no, nope, it got broken. But I do see that, that uh, the mode line did get updated, so it seems that it recognizes where we are, which is good. Uh, eat dash, Let's see, where are we? Is there a way to switch to a different mode where I can just kind of move around? Care mode? Probably not care mode. There's semi-care mode and care mode. Is there a line mode also? Doesn't look like it. Oh, we made it back to the prompt somehow. Maybe just hitting escape enough times. So, what was I gonna do? Uh, Control X, Control F. Yeah, we're in the Crafted Emacs folder. That's great. Uh, HTOP. We did that once before, I think. What was it? There was something else I was about to do, and I totally lost my train of thought. Check in the uh, chat real quick. Uh, John says, uh, does Geeks Home allow you to install things under your user? Yes, because that's what... Geeks itself does. You don't even need Geeks Home for that. If you have the Geeks package manager installed, even on your own, uh, a different Linux distribution or something, um, any package you install using Geeks install is installed for you in your own user profile. It's not installed in your home folder per se, because you running Geeks install hands off that job to the Geeks build daemon, which is running as you know basically a super user and it builds everything, gets all the files ready, and then it puts it into a profile directory that then gets symbolically, symbolically linked into your, well, not symbolically linked, it, it gets added to your path via environment variable, basically. And then you have access to those commands basically for your own user. Other users could probably figure out your profile and load it themselves, but it won't affect them. So it is kind of nice for that. Uh, try piping. Man, there was something I was going to do and I totally lost it. We did HTOP. That did work, right? And in fact, I would say this looks better than what VTerm did because the text isn't all blacked out uh, the way it was before with uh, VTerm. So to me, that looks pretty good. You know, you actually have a uh, terminal experience where you can navigate around and do the things you need to do. Uh, let's see. Let's run Emacs inside. Whoa! What did I just do? I'm kind of surprised that that happened. Huh? Curious. Okay, so it seems the trick is to hit Escape <laughs> to get back to the prompt. Uh, Emacs NW, I think is probably what I wanted to do, and then um, init. Directory, let's not do crafted Emacs because I don't know what it will pull up. Uh, shell test, boom. Now we're in this, control X, not still there. But I know that EAT has the ability to turn on uh, something called uh, care mode, which I think will let you pass things directly through. So if I were to look at uh, EAT care mode, 
Can you... Oh, yeah, 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 fine. Is it Control-C, Control-J? Is that right? No. Eat care mode. Control-C, Meta D. All right. Control-X, Control-C. Okay, cool. Um, it does actually work like that then. Control-X, Control-F. So it's, it's much easier to use Emacs inside of Emacs, which... Okay, you probably won't want to do that, but I'm just sort of showing you that you can use a full terminal program inside the context of this. Uh, now we're in uh, in Deer Ed. It is flashed in a little bit. I don't know if that's a, a thing with Wayland or something. Uh, the Eat repo says something about flashing or... What was it called? Where did it say that? Flickers. And it says that eat doesn't flicker, but it, it is flickering right now. So I don't know what the deal is with that. VI inside Emacs inside Emacs. Well, let's see. Actually, I don't have VI installed in my um, Geek Shell profile right now. But it is working, as you can see. Control H I, open up info mode, and there's eat here in the nested uh, session. Why is it not actually loading it though? Oh, yeah, I think that selection came from my own. There we go. Anyway, it is working. That blinking is killing me, though. All right, control X, control C. We're out of there now. And um, control C, control C. Yeah. So, I, okay, cool. We're, we're back to the prompt again. So uh, the, the prompt jumping thing or the cursor jumping thing is something I personally need to figure out with my shell. I don't really know what the, the deal is there, but let's, let's talk a little bit more about, um, about EAT itself, because I feel like it's a good sort of middle ground alternative to VTerm. VTerm is a little bit quirky, um, and I'm, I'm looking for a replacement for it because I want to just, I want to use a real shell like Bash or Z shell uh, instead of using E shell a lot of the time. And VTerm slows me down in certain ways. Maybe I could fix that if I really tried, but I would also like to try uh, Eat first and see if it will work for me. Comparison with other terminal emulators. So this is an interesting section here uh, to, to describe that. Uh, term, which we saw earlier. Term is the Emacs built-in terminal emulator. Uh, it's pretty good, but it's slow. It's so slow that Eat can beat native compiled term even without byte compilation. So. Whatever EAT is doing is faster than the built-in term package. Uh, EAT is more than three times fast. Also, term flickers. Uh, just try running Emacs-NW in it. Well, we did that with EAT, and it flickers too. So I don't know what the deal is with that. Uh, it doesn't support remote connections, for example, over Tramp. However, it has line mode, which EAT still doesn't have. So yeah, I was looking for line mode, and it doesn't have that. Not a huge problem, though. If you want line mode in the terminal or use an old version of Emacs, you can use term, but coterm plus shell is probably a better choice in case your Emacs is 26.1 or above. Uh, coterm is another package, which is um, for terminal emulation inside of the comment mode, which you've probably seen if you've used any REPLs inside of uh, Emacs, but also shell mode, which is another shell interface in Emacs, uses comment mode. If you've never seen shell mode before, uh, Let's get back to, wow, now I can't even get out of this. Control C, Control J. Control C, Meta D. Did that get me there? No. <laughs> Exit. Let me out. Okay, shell. Shell is kind of peculiar. Um, so, you know, at, at first glance it looks okay, but I think that might be be eat doing this. I'm not sure exactly who's responsible for the prompt looking right. But shell is funny because it's not actually a a full shell environment. It's actually a comment buffer which is calling out to uh, a shell environment to run a program whenever you try to run it. So if I were to try to run htop here, yeah, it, it, it does weird stuff. But um, ls uh, gnu store yeah that's the same old stuff we were seeing before anyway the point being oh wait okay yeah it, it didn't show me the thing i thought i saw 
it's not a full shell inside of Emacs. It's sort of like faking a shell environment and it's not a good terminal emulator either. But basically what this documentation is saying is if you use this code term package along with shell, then it makes it more like a terminal emulator. I don't know. Matabir says you should place a space between your prompt. I thought I had one, but maybe, uh, maybe I don't. Anyway, back to the comparison. Vterm is powered by a C library. For this reason, it can process huge amounts of text quickly. <clears throat> it's about 1.5 times faster than EAT, even if uh, EAT is uh, byte compiled or native compiled. It doesn't have a care mode, which we saw. Um, Vterm has its own binding setup for certain keys, like Control X, Control C, etc. So if you want to type in Control X or Control C, you have to find some other way to do it. Uh, and it says, however, you can make a care mode by spending some effort. If you write some Emacs Lisp, you can do it. It also flickers like term. I actually have not seen it flicker like that. Um, so despite it being much faster than eat, it seems to be slow. If you need your terminal to handle huge bursts of data, you should use vterm. So if you have a lot of uh, shell output from programs, then uh, vterm can be better. Um, I think it's because it's paging the, uh, the output. It's, it's buffering it and paging it in. And that's why it seems to be faster because for terminal programs, um, there is a cooperation between the terminal program and the uh, terminal emulator. And the speed at which the terminal emulator can read the output of the terminal program actually dictates how fast the program runs. So because uh, the built-in terminals emulators in Emacs are slower to process all the output coming from a program, it basically causes the terminal program's output to be buffered. And it kind of like, well, it's not even buffered, like just sort of blocks the execution because it's waiting to write out to the terminal. So the program runs slower because Emacs can't read the output fast enough to allow the program to run at full speed. That's why you see uh, in Vterm programs just like, execute almost instantly because it's buffering the output from the program and just blasting it to the screen in an Emacs buffer. So it doesn't hold it up. It just kind of like just buffers all the information, and just puts it on the screen. So programs can execute more quickly that way. I could be wrong about that. Somebody can correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure that's the reason why things seem to be a lot faster in Vterm. It's not because it writes out the output faster because that is limited by Emacs own display system and also whatever other stuff is going on in the background of Emacs at the time. Uh, so because it's paging in that information from a background process, it seems to be a lot faster. It actually does allow programs to run faster. Shabash says, so we get bottlenecking. Yes, it, it causes a, bo a bottleneck basically. Uh, Christian says, hello, Christian. <coughs> Excuse me. Personal TLDR, eShell is the winner for me. FF for find file is very nice for 99% or for 90% of my use. Uh, yeah, I also have uh, aliases set up for stuff like that, so it's pretty cool. Eshell is nice; it, it you know it has benefits, but also it, it has drawbacks as we've as we've seen. So code term plus shell, I'm not too worried about that one because I don't really care too much for shell mode. Maybe there's some benefit to shell mode that I don't know about, but um, I haven't really seen it. All right, so um, kind of curious, like what else we can learn just like looking at the docs here. So uh, EAT has three key binding modes, semi-care mode, uh, which is the default key binding mode. Uh, most keys are bound to send the key to the terminal, except probably a lot of the common things you would want to press in Emacs, like control X, control C, control G, control H, etc. cetera. Um, you can set EAT semi-care non-bound keys probably to change that if you wanted to, which is cool. Uh, there are special key bindings available. Control Q sends the next key to the terminal. Control C and Control Y, Meta Y do yank and pop, uh, but in the terminal and not uh, as an Emacs buffer. So that could be useful. Um, uh, control C, Control E switch to Emacs key binding mode. That must be the difference between. Oh, Control C, Control J. Hmm. So there's Emacs mode. Control, wait, get out of shell. Let's go back to eat, because that eat's dead. Control C, Control E. Okay, so if you press Control C, Control E, you you get access to the uh, uh, normal Emacs keys. You can do whatever you want. And uh, to get back, you press Control C, Control J to get back to semi care mode. You can also see here in the mini buffer what uh, mode you're currently in, which is kind of useful. And um, 
the control C meta D, which goes to care key binding mode, which means every key binding you press goes directly into um, the terminal application. All supported keys are bound to send a key to the terminal except control meta M or meta ret, which is bound to um, semi care key binding mode. So if I were to go to control C meta D, Okay, and now I'm in care mode, as you can see in the mode line. Um, pretty much anything I do here, if I do control X, control F, it doesn't go to Emacs at all. It just goes straight to the terminal. So I have to press meta return to get back to semi care mode. Okay, that's not bad. Totally doable. Um, now, there is one other option. Before we get into that, let's quickly uh, write down what we see as the pros and cons. Cons, I will say, uh, have some issues with uh, the pr uh, cursor jumping upward when using tab for completions sometimes. Uh, not as fast as VTerm, but still not bad. Um, better, for pros, I would say better uh, key binding modes uh, to control how key presses uh, get sent to the terminal. What else did we run into? Also requires uh, some shell integration, but it's easy to set up, uh, pretty much automatic, as we saw with the directory tracking. So it's it's a con that it's uh, that it is required, but it's not that bad. I mean, you just got to put a couple lines into your uh, your shell config like these these here. It says there's an info manual available with much more information. Maybe we should check that out really quick. So Control H I M eat. Control H I M eat. I have eat here. Okay. So the, yeah, there's a lot more stuff here. Common problems. When you get garbage in your terminal, input is not shown, eat is unresponsive, unresponsive. Okay, that's pretty cool. I mean, they've got decent docs here. Starting eat's terminal for the first time, meta x eat. Project local terminal. That sounds cool. Um, oh, eat project. Yeah, that's one cool little feature that I saw that I haven't got a chance to, to use yet. But uh, if we were to go to, yeah, crafted Emacs, uh, eat dash project, it creates a, spe a special eat shell uh, buffer for that project. And it knows it's a project because it's using project.el, I think, to detect it. So if I were to even go to, let, let's say, uh, mesh, I guess. Wait a second. That ain't right. There we go. And also run uh, eat project here. It would give me a mesh eat uh, shell. So it's just another shell uh, in your list of sort of buffers, and you can switch between those. Uh, I tend to use project specific shells pretty frequently because it's nice to have you know separate contexts for things you're doing if you have to like run programs that kind of thing. So uh, that is nice. Uh, I'll add that as a pro in our uh, information here. So um, Andy uh, eat project command. I mean, this is not something that's very hard to make yourself. Um, I've done it with eShell before. It's easy to do with vterm. It's not really a hard thing to do, but it's nice to have it you know, built in so you don't have to worry about that yourself. So um, we'll get to that in a second. Uh, keyboard keys are captured by EAT. Uh, it supports the mouse, input modes, shell integration. What else? Uh, cursor types, blah, blah, blah. Colors. 
Eat can show more than 16 million colors. Well, that's cool. <clears throat> I don't have a program that can uh, verify that for us, though. Blinking text, fine tuning to maximize performance. Oh. Some programs choke and hang when given too much input at once. Okay, so that's only for input. What about output? <clears throat> Flickering. Minimum latency. Okay, the minimum time in seconds to wait for the next chunk to arrive. So there is some stuff that you can use here to um, tweak the performance of eat output. So if performance matters to you, you might be able to uh, to mess with those a little bit. That's pretty cool. So what I wanted to talk about next, since we have about 15 minutes left, is the possibility that you can use uh, eShell shell and eat at the same time to potentially get the best of both worlds. And I think how this works is that uh, eat sort of takes over the execution of commands so that whenever you run something, uh, it acts more like an, a legitimate terminal emulator uh, in the context of that eShell command being run. So let me, can I, can I pull info back up again? Yeah, right here. I saw something here about that. Eats emulation, uh, terminal emulation in eShell. So uh, after configuring eShell to use eat for terminal emulation, you can run any full screen terminal program in eShell. To enable terminal emulation in eShell, enable the global minor mode, eat eShell mode. It will enable eats terminal emulation in eShell. That sounds pretty easy. You can't toggle the global minor mode while any eShell command is running. So terminate any eShell command or wait for them to finish before toggling the mode, okay? Ah, you may also want to set eShell visual commands user option to nil because it will override what uh, eShell mode is doing. Um, if you want to run eShell visual commands with eat, you can enable the global minor mode eShell, uh, eat eShell visual command mode. So let's give that a try really quick. We're going to go back to our init.el file. <coughs> Excuse me. And in the config here, I'm going to add uh, eat eShell mode, I believe. Uh, also, I'll set Q um, eShell visual commands. What was it? eShell visual. Yeah, eShell visual commands to an empty list. All right. Do I have any eShells open right now? Uh, no. So now eShell visual, whoa. I'm trying to use evil mode here, obviously. All right, eShell visual commands is nil. Uh, okay. And if I were to run eShell, if I run htop here, uh, it seems to be uh, loading up htop just fine, and I'm still in the eShell buffer, so I should be able to, you know, move my my uh, arrow, arrow keys around and everything I want to do. I would run Emacs here. Let's see. Oh, yeah, I didn't use dash nw, so that's my fault. Dash nw um, init directory dot. Well, we're still in the eShell buffer, and it does seem to be working. Let's see. Can I? use the same eat key bindings. So eat, uh, okay, so it's control C, meta D, control X, control C. Yeah, it works. So basically you can have both if you want. You don't have to necessarily use bash uh, in eat. You can use e shell. You can get the benefits of e shell in large part and then when you need to run a terminal application, like for me, there's like one or two terminal applications I have to use every now and then. And uh, if I don't have to uh, struggle with those anymore uh, by switching to a different shell, I might just go back to using eShell. So uh, let's, let's try um, bash. Yeah, so I can just basically run bash here now, which is cool. It, it seems to be working as you would expect. You have a nested shell. I could probably run Geeks shell here without any trouble, but I don't have Geeks installed in this uh, profile. So um, that wasn't very much code to configure that. Uh, you just sort of turn on that uh, eat eShell mode. You clear out your eShell visual commands just to make sure that uh, that's not going to fight with what uh, eat is doing. 
and then EAT will take over when it comes to emulating um, those programs in the context of eShell. So maybe you like having the best of both worlds. Let's go back to the org file. Pros, um, you can run full terminal applications from within eShell. Uh, cons, I would say, which is not really a con, but it's just something to know, is that uh, you probably won't have, well, um, you still aren't using a POSIX shell. Uh, so you might get uh, confused and expect certain things things to work like bash, like uh, subcommands or piping, etc. Because those are different in eShell. Subcommands have different syntax in eShell, which is something that, that is uh, hard to adjust to at first. But hey, you get used to it. Uh, let's see. Pros, um, you still have full integration with uh, Emacs. Uh, no um, shell integration scripts needed on the eat side because eat is really just you know intercepting the request to run a terminal command and just running it with its own emulation and then whenever that that program exits the the control goes back to eshell so eshell is one that's sort of uh keeping track of what directory you're in at that point um and all your prompt is rendered using emacs lisp everything else is, is done with emacs lisp um you have normal uh full e the uh, full Emacs driven uh, prompt editing and display, which is nice. Uh, Christian says, wait, these can be combined? Shouldn't have phased out and played with terminals during the EAT segment. Yeah, well, I mean, it, EAT is pretty straightforward, to be honest. I mean, I, I feel like it's a good middle ground. So if you go look at the the, um, the readme or the info file that comes with the package, uh, which actually has a lot more information in it, then uh, you'll you'll see everything you need, you need to know. Honestly, I feel like you know using eShell with Eat, <laughs> excuse me, uh, eradicates the the main issues that I had with it. So um, you know now that I don't have to worry about the prompt jumping around in weird ways, or you know I can I can edit the prompt however I, I want to. Um, it it seems a lot more useful to me to have Eat be uh, involved in this whole situation. So I might actually try that for a while. I might try using uh, eShell again, because it's easier to configure, in my opinion, uh, along with uh, Eat to run uh, the terminal programs. Uh, John says Emacs driven means that it all runs in a single thread with all the brittleness. There is that problem. I wonder how easy it is to say, I never want you to run certain commands with uh, with e, uh, Emacs Lisp. So um, let's see, is there a, like a variable for that? E shell. Let's see. Ah, I, f I remember, yes. E, e shell prefer Lisp functions. I think that's the one you want. So we can turn eShell e prefer list functions to, oh, uh, it's nil. One of these is the one we want, because I think I had that in the past. eShell prefer list variables. I wonder if e changes that though. Let's, let's see, ls gnu store. No, okay, still doing the same behavior as before. I use control G to back out of that. Ah, which one is it? Eshell does have this configuration. Let's see. If you want to discard a given built-in command, you could declare an alias. Several, several commands are built in in Eshell in order to call the external variant. Use star foo. Um, so you basically have to set up uh, aliases, which is not not too cool. But uh, let's let's just try that. Uh, I'm going to do this for ls. 
And this is an E shell alias, not a bash alias here. So I'm gonna paste that in. I'll put in uh, LS. Now, LS GNU slash store. And well, even that's not working. So which, oh, pff, alias pseudo. That's fun. My mistake. Alias LS. Let's get it right. Okay, so now uh, LS GNU slash store, and then it should start writing all the output. Uh, still seems a little bit slow though, which is interesting. Actually, no. It finished quite fast. I think it's paging it. Huh. Okay, well, there you go. I mean, if you wanted, you could set things up. It does require some extra configuration to make things be uh, uh, extra nice. Uh, Ricky says, I think there's an eShell vterm package. You might be right. Run eShell visual commands in vterm. That's cool. I feel like I heard about this, but I never got around to trying it. So let me just put it in as a possible option for other people. Uh, time LS versus time LS. Well, it's, yeah, I don't know if it's worth doing. Because there's, there's too many factors involved, I think, to get like a real, you know, clear uh, view of the performance of the running the command. So yeah, if you want to get the, the best of both worlds, more or less, uh, you could use eat plus e shell and it seems to work quite well. Um, so long as you have everything set up right. So let me uh, drop in, uh, let's see, the I'll tell you one thing about uh, eShell. I, I want to be able to set things like aliases inside of Emacs Lisp. There's a separate aliases file for eShell. If you were to go to uh, shell test slash eshell slash alias, you can check in this file. I would prefer to just set an Emacs Lisp and I found it to not be very straightforward. But uh, on the other hand, there is this file you can just check in with your Emacs config. So things like uh, alias uh, cp star cp, if you wanted to, to copy to not block your uh, Emacs process. Um, so any other commands you have trouble with, you can just set them up in the aliases. So I'll uh, pull that over too. Whoa, how did I do that? Oh, I didn't save it yet. There we go. Cool. We don't need the theme in there. So, uh, Uh, Akeep says, not really, eShell vterm is similar to eShell visual commands. All right, Akeep, um, I got about five minutes left. Is there anything I missed talking about on EAT that people should know about? Because I've just been, you know, rambling and, and navigating around. I'm just kind of scanning through the chat now to see if I missed anything people were saying. Ah, so Gun's given some, uh, some suggestions on the syntax which I think is, well, is that right? Because you may want to use uh, parameters as well. So I don't know if, if you want uh, to, to, to phrase it like that. It could cause trouble. Another thing I can do is go back to the info file for eat and take a look at it again. So we saw eShell terminal. Uh, fonts, it can show up to 60, 60 different fonts. 
Ah, okay. You can change uh, faces, eat turn bold, etc., to be whatever face you want. That's kind of nice. I haven't seen that before in a package. So if you want to have some nice, fancy-looking uh, stuff, you can do that. Uh, Andre says, uh, Emacs Eat is in the Geeks Package Repository. Yes, it is. I don't know if it's up to date, though. I think it's uh, behind a little bit. At least that it was whenever I took a look at it. Let's see. What, 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 excuse me. What commits do we have here? Um, tags. I think it was like 0 0.8, four months ago. That's the version that Geeks has right now. So it's four months old, and there's been a lot of commits since then. So um, at some point, it would be nice if the Eat project would uh, put another tag for maybe 0 0.9 or something so that Geeks can be up to date. Otherwise, someone would have to go and um, pin it to a later commit, which I don't know if people are happy with. Also, you can just do your own package transform and get the latest commit, which is uh, totally possible. Maybe I should do that, actually. I already do it with Evil Collection. Um, all right, back to this. Blinking text. Uh, who uses blinking text anymore in terminal programs? I haven't actually seen that in a long time. But you can turn it off. And ch you can also change the uh, frequency, which is nice. Uh, the kill ring. Enable kill from terminal. Um, killing something from the terminal will add the text Emacs kill ring. Enable by default. That makes sense. Programs can receive the kill ring contents. Now, I'm guessing that uh, this is for the integration with the shell. Um, it could you can have a script in bash that can ask it for uh the the kill ring see you christian have a nice weekend mouse tracking cursor types okay you can change uh, how the cursors look for different things that's cool scroll back and you can change the scroll back size sounds good it probably <clears throat> excuse me Probably only matters if you use eat directly without using something else like eShell. Getting the most from eat in your shell. Uh, enable directory tracking. Annotate shell prompts to indicate the status of the command entered in that prompt. Okay, cool. Um, I see. That's why Eat has that uh, little margin area on the side. I keep seeing that, and I wasn't sure what that was about, but apparently because uh, in the margin, Eat can put the output status of commands uh, at, at certain locations of your shell. So, like, if you have an, uh, an error, ls foo, it could show up in the fringe or in the margin here, but uh, I don't have that tracking set up. Um, is it turned on by default? Eat enable shell prompt annotation. T. Okay, so it's not working here, but that's okay. I probably just haven't done the work to get it uh, set up. Uh, input modes. I think we've already seen that. Uh, semi care mode, care mode, and Emacs mode. Uh, confirming before you. Uh, kill your terminal, sure. Okay, well, I will say that um, it's a pretty interesting project. And I think that the combination of eShell plus eat could be pretty nice for a lot of people. So if you um, want to use eShell, but the certain programs don't work well with it, definitely uh, try eat along with the uh, configuration that I have here, which is basically nothing. It's pretty easy to set that up. And uh, just use eShell. And then you can set up your prompt configuration inside of uh, Emacs Lisp. Like if you want to see what mine looks like, uh, dot file slash Emacs modules shell <clears throat> prompt. Yeah, I basically just write um, my prompt as uh, Emacs Lisp, and it gives me full control over how everything looks, colors, faces, everything. So uh, it's kind of nice to have full control over that and be able to use Emacs Lisp to write that out. So, uh, you know, that's one benefit of eShell if you wanted to, to try that. 
Uh, but anyway, uh, hopefully that was useful to people to sort of see the differences between the, the various terminals, pros and cons, um, maybe reasons why you would want to use them or try them out. Um, and if you want to see more videos on things like eShell or Eat or anything like that, let me know. I mean, whenever I start making videos again, that, that will be useful. Uh, I'll commit this uh, show notes file uh, to the website so you can get access to, that, access to that immediately. I will say sometimes Codeberg Pages does not update the page that I push very... Uh, it takes a while, let's say, before the actual changes show up. So if you don't see the updated page show up for a while, just, just keep waiting and refreshing the page and maybe it will show up eventually. I don't know. Codeberg has kind of given me a headache recently. But anyway, uh, thank you all so much for being here. I uh, appreciate you all. And uh, rem reminder that I will be out the next two weeks. There won't be any streams the next two Fridays, but then we'll be back right after that. So I uh, hope you all have a great uh, weekend and also the next couple weeks. And uh, until next time. Happy hacking. We'll see you. Thanks a lot.